Okay. All right, Bacha Padi, we are going to start today with uh, arithmetic progression and this happens to be one of the very important chapters that you have in mathematics for class 10 across all boards, especially in CBSC, Maharashtra State Board and across ICSC as well. So it's a very uh, common chapter, the concepts here are very common and the entire chapter actually finishes off in three formulas. Okay. So first of all, we need to understand what is a progression or what is a series. Okay, so let's understand this, what is basically a series. So we are going to start with arithmetic progressions, that is basically a sequence. So first of all, let's understand a sequence. So let's say if we have a list of numbers, the first list here is 1, 3, then we have 5, 7. So if you, if you notice, uh, it is basically a series, 1, 3, 5, 7. Can we predict the next number? Obviously, yes. So it will be obviously 9 then 11, then 13, then 15 and so on and so forth. How do we know this? It's very, it's very evident that here the difference is plus 2, here the difference is plus 2, here the difference is plus 2 and so on and so forth. So that's one reason why we are able to understand this pattern and accordingly predict the next line of numbers that would be there in this series. Now let's look at this, the second list, minus 45, minus 40. Can we predict the next set of numbers? The answer is obviously yes. It's not always that a sequence or a series is formed by adding up of common differences. It can be basically subtracting as well. So here we have minus 45, minus 40, minus 35. What would be the next set of numbers? Obviously minus 30, minus 25, minus 20. So here what we are doing? Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5 and so on and so forth. So in the second list also we are able to predict the next set of numbers okay so these are the next set of numbers minus 25 in the third list let's say 7 11 20 minus 1 now here comes the tricky question uh, we have understood the patterns in these two is there a pattern that is getting established in this one so the answer is no because here we have 4 here we have a difference of plus 9 here we have let's say 20 if we add minus 21 to this, then we'll get minus 1. So here we do not have a common difference between the consecutive terms. So this will definitely not form a sequence because sequence is something in which by just looking at the pattern, you can predict the next set of numbers. You don't have to actually go into writing those numbers. You can predict the next set of numbers. Here you cannot, here you cannot. So this will definitely not qualify for a sequence. And this is not something that we are going to study in arithmetic progressions, okay? All right, so let's move ahead. So guess the next set of numbers. Obviously, we cannot guess. Here, there is a definite pattern and that's one reason why we were able to guess. But here, there is no definite pattern and that's one reason why we are not able to guess. So what is basically a sequence? A sequence is a list of numbers which follow a definite pattern. So a sequence is basically a list of numbers which follows a definite pattern, okay? So so is this forming a sequence? The answer is no, does not follow a pattern. It does not follow a pattern. So it obviously does not qualify for a sequence. If it no, is not following a pattern, it will not qualify for being a sequence, okay? In this chapter, we will do, deal only with sequences. So each number in the list is called a term and is denoted by A. So each number in the list is called a term. Uh, let's say here we have A. Uh, in many books, let's say in Maharashtra State Board, this is denoted as term T, okay? The first term is always denoted as A. For any sequence, the first term is always denoted as A or it can also be known as A1 or it can also be known as or it can also be written as T1. The next term is denoted as A2. The next term denoted by A3, A4 and so on and so forth. In Maharashtra State Board or in many other boards as well, it is denoted as T2. T3, T4. Whether it is A or T, it means the same thing. There is a term. Okay. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so forth. So these are basically terms. Okay. <coughs> so third term is A4 and so on and so forth. Now we will go to A and D. Let's say we have here 7, 9, 11, 13. Is this a sequence? So let's see. Here we have a difference of 2. Here we have a difference of 2. Here we have a difference of 2. Yes, it is a sequence. Okay, because there is a common difference which can be accommodated and hence it qualifies for a sequence. Okay, so is this a sequence, Bachapati? Yes, this is. Okay, so we have here A1, A2, A3, A4. 
so a1 a2 a3 a4 we can also write t1 t2 t3 t4 in different books you have different representations of these terms so here in this book you have a representation or rather in in ncert or in cbsc we have a representation of a1 a2 a3 and a4 t1 t2 t3 and t4 okay so let's find basically the difference between two consecutive terms what is the difference between two consecutive terms terms which come one after the other are basically known as consecutive terms so this is a2 this is a1 so these are consecutive terms a3 a2 consecutive terms a4 a3 consecutive terms terms that come one after the other are known as consecutive terms so here we have a2 and a1 which is a consecutive term so what is the difference the difference that is there between a2 and a1 is going to be the same difference that is going to be there between a3 and a2 and it's going to be the same difference that's going to be there between a4 and a3 the difference between a2 and a1 let's say d is equal to a2 minus a1 the difference between a3 and a4 let's say a4 minus a3 and so on and so forth okay and so on and so forth so we have basically two here we have a difference of two here we have a difference of two and so on and so forth difference between any two consecutive terms is always constant in a sequence so the difference between these two is two difference between these two is two difference between these two is two so this difference is always going to remain as constant between any two consecutive terms in a sequence okay now let's move ahead people such type of sequence is known as arithmetic progression so in a sequence in which there is a common difference any sequence which basically has a common difference we will call that as arithmetic progression okay so here we have a common difference which is basically two so we also write this as cd or the actual representation here is d we also write it as cd or the actual representation is d common difference okay let's move ahead for an ap first term a is denoted as a common difference is denoted as d so let's say here we have the first term a as 7 and what is the common difference the difference between any two consecutive terms that's basically 2 okay in this case okay so ap is a sequence in which the difference between any two consecutive terms is the same so ap is any sequence in which the difference between any two consecutive terms one after the other is always going to be the same okay that is called ap okay which of the following are ap so let's identify whether it is an ap here we have plus 2 here we have plus 4 here we have plus 8 so is this an ap the answer is no because the common difference is not same so a sequence qualifies to be an arithmetic progression only if there is a common difference here the difference is not common here between these two consecutive terms the difference is plus 2 between these two consecutive terms the difference is plus 4 between these two consecutive terms the difference is plus 8 so this doesn't qualify for an ap okay so let's find the difference between consecutive terms okay so let's say a1 is 2 then we have a2 is 4 then we have a3 is 8 a4 is 16 so we have a2 minus a1 that is basically 2 we have a3 minus a2 that is basically 4 then we have so as the difference we don't need to go further okay we don't need to actually go further although i explained it to you that 16 minus 8 is 8 but we don't need to go there uh, actually between these two consecutive terms the difference is not constant so as the difference is not constant the given list of numbers is not an arithmetic progression that's how we are going to understand what is an arithmetic progression okay all right so let's say minus 10 minus 6 is this an ap let's understand this whether this is an ap okay so we have minus 10 minus 6 minus 2 2 here what is the common difference so if you add plus 4 to this it will become minus 6 if you add plus 4 to this it will become minus 2 if you add plus 4 to this it will become plus 2 so in an ap difference between any two consecutive terms is constant so is this difference constant yes it is so there is a common difference there is a common difference so let's find the difference between consecutive terms so the common difference here is plus 4 okay so since the common difference is constant this qualifies for an ap as the difference is constant the given list of numbers is an ap okay let's say this one 0 0.2 0 0.22 0 0.22 0 0.22 and 2 okay is this an ap let's look at this people so we have 0 0.2 here we have 0 0.22 if i subtract this from this what do i get 0 0.02 
right? Uh, then we have 0 0.222. If I subtract this from this, I will get an answer of 0 0.002. Are these two the same? Answer is no. Hence, it doesn't qualify to be an AP. Are these two the same? It is not. So, it doesn't qualify to be an AP. A1 is this, A2 is this, A3 is this. So, if I do a A2 minus A1, I will get 0 0.02. If I do an A3 minus A2, I will get 0 0.002. So, obviously, this is not qualifying for an AP. This is not qualifying for an AP. As the difference is not constant, the given list of numbers is not an AP. The difference here is not constant. Hence, the given list of numbers is not an AP. Let us look at this one. 0 minus 4 minus 8 minus 12. Let us look at this one. So, here we have minus 4 minus 0. What do we get? Minus 4. Here we have minus 8 minus minus 4. So, that will be minus 8 plus 4. That is how much? Minus 4. Here we have minus 12 minus minus 8. That is minus 12 plus 8. That is again minus 4. So, again if you see the common difference here is the same. So, does this qualify for an AP? The answer is yes. Okay. So, A1 is equal to 0. So, minus 4 minus 4 and then again we have as the difference is constant, the given list of numbers is an AP. So, here the difference is constant, hence the given list of numbers will be an AP. Which of the following? Again, the same question here. Which of the following is AP? 1, 3, 9, 27. Let us look at this. The difference here is plus 2. The difference here is plus 6. The difference here is plus 18. So, obviously, the common difference is not constant. Hence, it will not qualify to be an AP. Okay. <coughs> All right, so here we have A1, A2, A3. If I do uh, A2 minus A1, 2, again 6. As the difference is not constant, the given list of numbers is not an AP. Pretty easy questions. Let us look at this one. A, 2A, 3A and 4A. So, if I do, a, uh, let us say this is basically your A1, this is your A2, this is your A3 and finally this is your A4. So, if I do uh, A2 minus A1, that will be 2A minus A, that is A. If I do a A3 minus A2, that will be a 3A minus 2A, that is A. If I do a A4 minus A3, that is 4A minus 3A, that is A. So, all these are basically what people, all these are constants. So, is this an AP? The answer is yes, it is an AP. This will qualify to be an AP. Okay. So, here we have A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on and so forth. As the difference is constant, the given list of numbers is an AP. The given list of numbers will be an AP. Let us say here we have 2, 5 by 2, 3, 7 by 2. So, what do we have here people? A1, this will be what? 5 by 2, A2, this is A3, this is A4. So, let us say uh, a very rough idea. 5 by 2 we know is 2 and a half. This is basically your 2. So, what is the difference between those two? Half. If I say A2 minus A1, obviously this will be half. Let us say 3 and 2 and a half. So, between 3 and 2 and a half, what is the difference? Again, half. Between A4 and A3, what is the difference? So, this is 7 by 2, which is 3 and a half. Between 3 and a half and 3, again, the difference is half. So, if we say, if we see this series, the common difference stands out to be half. So, is this an AP? Answer is yes, it is an AP. Okay. So, let us look at this, people. So, we have 2, A2 is 5 by 2, A3 is 3. So, if I do a 5 by 2 minus 2, that is 1 by 2. Again, this is 1 by 2. Again, this is 1 by 2. So, if I look at it, the constant term here or rather the constant difference is 1 by 2. So, if the constant difference is 1 by 2, so as the difference is constant, the given list of numbers is an AP. Okay. Uh, okay. Let us look at this. Minus half, minus half, minus half, minus half. What is the qualification for a sequence to be an AP? It is simple. It has to be a constant common difference. Now, let us look at this. Is this qualifying for an AP? Answer is yes. Why not? Because if I do, what is the common difference here? Plus 0, here, plus 0, here, plus 0. When we add 0 to any number, the number remains the same. The number is actually the same. So, do we have a common difference here? The answer is yes. And what is the common difference value? 0. Okay. The common difference value here is 0. So, this will be the common difference. So, this will be 0, 0, 0. So, as difference is constant, the given list of numbers is an AP. Let us look at this. Okay. Okay. We have here A1 is equal to under root 3. What about A2? 
Bacha body A2 will be under root of 6. And that's what? Under root of 6 can be written as under root of 2 into under root of 3. So if I happen to subtract A2 minus A1, what do I get? Under root 2, under root 3, minus under root 3. If I happen to take out under root 3 as common, what do I get? Under root 2 minus under uh, minus 1. Okay, let's uh, take this. Okay, A1, A2. What is A3? That is under root of 9. That is how much? Under root of 3 into under root of 3. Can we say this? Right? Okay, so if I do a, a3 minus a2, that will be under root of 3 into under root of 3 minus a2, that is 2 under root 3. If I happen to take out under root 3 as common, so under root 3 minus 2, under root 3 minus 2. Are these two the same? Answer is no. Is this qualifying to be an AP? Answer is no. This is not qualifying to be an AP. So this is A2, A3, A4. If I look at it, as the difference is not constant, the given list of numbers is not an AP. Okay. In which of the following situations does the list of numbers involved make an AP and why? So the taxi fare after each kilometer, when the fare is rupees 15 for the first kilometer and rupees 8 for additional kilometer. Okay. So the first kilometer, first kilometer, you will be charged rupees 15. For the second, for two kilometers, for actually the two kilometers, not the second one actually. Uh, for one kilometer, you will be charged rupees 15. Look at this very carefully. For two kilometers, rupees 15 for the first kilometer and rupees 8 for the next kilometer. That is how much? Rupees 23. Okay. For three kilometers, what is the charge? Rupees 15 plus 8 plus 8. First kilometer, second kilometer, third kilometer. So that will be rupees 31. Okay. For four kilometers, what will be the charge? Rupees 15 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. So that will be rupees 39. Okay. Now look at this. 23 minus 15, 8. 31 minus 23, 8. 39 minus 31, 8. All are basically 8 kilometers. Okay. All are basically 8 kilometers. So we can say that so if let's say there is a taxi which is basically going the first kilometer it is going to get charged how much the for the first kilometer it is going to charge rupees 15 okay now uh, rupees 8 for each kilometer again one kilometer rupees 8 again so if you look at it what will be the charges 15 23 31 and so on and so forth 23 minus 15 is 8 31 minus 23 is 8 in in fact, any two consecutive kilometers, the charges will be in a having a difference of having a common difference of eight. So, does this qualify to be an AP? The answer is yes, it does qualify to be an AP. Since the difference between consecutive terms is constant, given sequence obviously will be an AP. The amount of air pressure in a cylinder when a vacuum pump remain removes one by fourth remaining cylinder at a time. Okay, let's look at this. So, there is a vacuum pump which is removing one by fourth of the air. So let's say uh, at first the pressure is V, at first the pressure is V. So uh, after removing 1 by 4, 1 by 4 of V is removed. So what remains is 3 by 4 of V, okay. So first instance the pressure is V. In the second case when 1 by 4 uh, air is removed, so obviously the pressure will be 3 by 4 V. Now 1 by 4 of this is removed, so which means in the third case, 1 by 4 of 3 by 4 V, that is removed. So how much air would be remaining? So this is removed. So this, how much is removed? 3 by 16 is removed. 3 by 16 V is removed. Now, how much air is remaining? 3 by 4 V minus 3 by 16 V. Understand this. First it was V, out of which I happen to remove 1 by 4 V. So how much is remaining? 3 by 4 V. First pressure, first case of pressure, first case of pressure, this will be basically second case of pressure. Okay. Third case of pressure, 1 by 4th of 3 by 4 V. That will be how much? 3 by 16 V. This has been removed. So how much remains? So how much remains? It will be 16, 4, 4s are 16, 3, 4s are 12. 12 minus 3. That is 9 by 16 V remains. So in uh, the third case, in the third case, 9 by 16 V remains. Okay. And so on and so forth. Let's subtract this. If I do a 3 by 4 V, minus v or rather okay uh, so this will be how much minus 1 by 4 v if i do a 9 by 16 v minus 3 by 4 v 
this will be how much 16 and this is 9 minus 12 that is minus 3 by 16 b are these two the same answer is no so this is not a sequence this is basically not a sequence let's look at this people let's make a list of air pressure remaining after every successful removal so amount of air after removing 1 by 4 of air so let's say this is basically cylinder how much let's say initial amount of pressure in the cylinder be v let's say the initial amount is v okay so this is filled completely filled <coughs> i'm sorry 1 by 4 is removed so this will be 1 by 4 v so that remains with 3 by 4 v again 1 by 4 of 3 by 4 v that is how much that is 9 by 16 v now what will be the difference 9 by 16 v minus 3 by 4 v minus 3 by 3 minus by 4 minus v by 4 minus 3 v by 16 are these the same answer is no hence this doesn't qualify since the difference between consecutive terms is not a constant given list of numbers is not an ap it will not qualify to be an ap okay let's move on in which of the following list the cost of digging a well after every meter of digging when it costs rupees 150 for the first meter and rises rupees 50 for each subsequent meter so let's say we have a well here we are digging this well up so the first one meter will cost you rupees 150 the next one meter is going to cost you rupees 50 the next one meter is going to again cost you an additional amount of rupees 50 the next one meter and so on and so forth so let's say for the first one meter you are charged how much rupees 150 for first one meter or rather let's say one meter okay so for two meters you will be charged this much that is rupees 200 for two meters then for for again this will be rupees 250 for three meters then again this will be rupees 300 for four meters so let's look at this 200 minus 150 that will give you 50 250 minus 200 50 300 minus 250 that is 50 do we have a common difference here the answer is yes so if we have a common difference does this qualify to be an ap the answer is yes okay so the cost of digging a well so let's say this is basically a well which is being dug for one meter for one meter you are charged rupees 150 for the next one meter again rupees 50 and so on and so forth so difference between two consecutive terms is obviously how much 50 the amount of money in the account every year when rupees 10,000 is deposited at a compound interest of 8 per annum. Okay, let's look at this. Amount we know is principal 1 plus R by 100 raised to N. Okay, so this is principal that is 10,000 into 1 plus R by 100 that is 8 by 100 raised to N that is let's say first year. First year it will be how much? This is 10,000 into uh, 108 by 100 so that gives you how much this will be 10800 so first year first year amount okay second year what will this be we know that again second year this will be the rupees 10800 plus rupees 10800 into 8 by 100 so if i happen to cancel this what do i get rupees 10800 plus 8 is a 64 0 is a 0 6 8 1 is a 8 so that is how much rupees 4 6 8 plus 8 16 this is 1 1 6 6 4 so in the first year it was 10 or rather at the start it was rupees 10,000 first year it was 10,800 amount this is basically amount start then after one year then after two years after two years subtract this from this what do you get 800 subtract this from this what do you get 4 6 so this is 864 right so if you look at it <laughs> 800 and 864 this is definitely not a constant if it is not a constant obviously we will <coughs> <coughs> not form an AP okay so <coughs> sorry so let's make amount of money in the account for successive years first year it is 10,000 okay in the second year we have how much 10,000 plus 8 that is 10,800 
in after two years obviously this will be the principal plus interest eight percent of ten thousand eight hundred that's going to be how much one one six six four so what is the amount that we are getting here the difference is 800 here the difference is 864 does this qualify to be an ap answer is no because the common difference is not constant it is not qualifying for an ap okay all right for the following write the first term and the common difference a very easy question very evident question the first term here is obviously three what is the common difference three plus three plus or rather three minus two here 1 minus 2 is minus 1 minus 2 so here the common difference is minus 2 the common difference here will be minus 2 let's look at this for the first term a is 3 common difference to calculate common difference subtract the consecutive terms 1 minus 3 that is going to give you minus 2 again here what will be the first term a is equal to minus 5 d will be equal to minus 1 minus minus 5 that is minus 1 plus 5 that is 4 okay uh, and again look at this 3 minus minus 1 so it is 4 so obviously the common difference here is 4 for the given AP A is equal to minus 5 common difference is equal to 4 1 by 3 5 by 3 9 by 3 13 by 3 if I happen to subtract this 5 by 3 minus 1 by 3 so that's how much 4 by 3 9 by 3 minus 5 by 3 that's how much 4 by 3 13 by 3 minus 9 by 3 that's how much 4 by 3 so this is basically the common difference this is the common difference let's look at this one people okay 0 0.6 1.7 now 1.7 minus 0 0.6 that's going to be 0 0.71 uh, if I do this 2.8 so this will be I'm sorry 1.1 .1, okay 2.8 minus 1.7 again 1.1 so the common difference here is 1.1 of course the first term here is 0 0.6 and the common difference is 1.1 okay so that basically completes the first module here let's <coughs> just one moment here 